The following video has been produced by Horizon Health Network to help teach individuals about the risks of smoking around the time of surgery and about the stop smoking medications available. Please feel free to pause or rewind and re-listen to the information at any time. This video is not intended to replace the advice of your healthcare providers. Hi, my name is Pauline. I'm a registered nurse at the perioperative clinic. My name is Ellen, and I'm a pharmacist at the perioperative clinic. Hello, my name is Dr. John Murphy. I'm a vascular surgeon. I deal with a lot of patients who deal with complications of smoking. You will be meeting many of us in the preoperative clinic. The goal is to make your surgery as safe as possible. We all believe it's extremely important that you stop smoking to avoid complications after your surgery. Please stop smoking. Hi. My name is Jana and I'm a pharmacy student working with your team at Horizon Health Network. You're probably listening to this video because you have a surgery coming up and you are a smoker. Whether you have a scheduled date for your surgery or you are unsure of when your surgery will be, you should start thinking about quitting smoking. Let's begin by going over the reasons why it is important to stop smoking before your surgery. Quitting smoking before surgery, ideally six to eight weeks before, can have the following benefits. Less risk of surgical complications such as heart attack. Less chance of wound infection. Speedier wound healing leading to a shorter stay in hospital. Less chance of being admitted to the intensive care unit or needing to go on a ventilator. Less chance of needing repeat surgery. Now you know why it is important to stop smoking before your surgery. On top of lessening the risks I just mentioned, let me share a few additional reasons that make right now a perfect time to stop smoking. You might be more motivated to change your lifestyle right now. Studies show that undergoing major surgery approximately doubles the chances that a smoker will quit smoking. Many patients don't crave nicotine around the time of surgery because there are so many other things to think about. If you do get cravings after surgery, a team of healthcare professionals is there to help. The hospital is a smoke-free space, meaning you cannot smoke while you are in hospital. After learning this information, hopefully you would like to quit smoking before your surgery. The longer the smoke-free period is before your surgery, the better. The Canadian Anesthesiologist Society suggests that you stop smoking at least one month before surgery and if you can't do that, at minimum, stop smoking eight hours before surgery. The first step in quitting is choosing a quit date. On your own or with the help of a healthcare professional, pick a quit day. It should be a normal day that will not be of high stress. Quitting can be difficult. This is because when you stop smoking, it takes your body some time to adjust from the loss of nicotine. Medications may help make this time easier on you and your body. In fact, using a stop smoking medication doubles or even triples your chances of successfully quitting long term. Let's spend the next few minutes talking about the stop smoking medications available in Canada and how to use them properly. As you can see, there are many different stop smoking medications available at your local pharmacy. Don't let this overwhelm you. These products all belong to the same family of medication called nicotine replacement therapy. You do not need a prescription from your doctor for these products. However, it is strongly recommended that you talk to your doctor or pharmacist about using them. Nicotine replacement therapy is available in the form of a patch, gum, lozenge, inhaler, and mouth spray. These products all work to help you stop smoking by controlling nicotine cravings and the withdrawal symptoms that may occur when you stop smoking. Nicotine patch. First, Let's discuss the nicotine patch. Nicotine patches are placed on a hairless, clean, dry area of skin on the upper body. This includes the arm, chest, or back. They are long-acting products, meaning they continue to deliver a consistent amount of nicotine to your body throughout the day. There are several different strengths available that contain various amounts of nicotine. Most patches are changed every 24 hours. Some may be changed more frequently than 24 hours, so check with a pharmacist. 
You should change the location of the patch each day to lessen skin irritation and avoid reusing the same location for a week. Properly dispose of the nicotine patch by folding it over, sticky sides together, and placing it in the protective pouch of the new system. There is enough nicotine left over to seriously injure a child or pet if ingested. Use a Ziploc bag labeled Return to Pharmacy to dispose of the old patches and keep it out of reach and away from children and pets. Common side effects of the nicotine patch are local irritation, headache, and trouble sleeping. The patch is normally used for 8 to 12 weeks, but may be used longer when necessary. There are several other nicotine replacement therapy products available, and they are all short-acting. This means they work quickly to relieve cravings and also leave the body quickly. Short-acting nicotine replacement products include nicotine gum, lozenges, inhaler, and mouse spray. A short-acting product can be used at the same time as the patch to help control cravings if necessary. They can also be used alone without the patch to quit smoking. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist to see if combining products might be a good option for you. Nicotine gum and lozenge. Do not chew the gum as if it is regular gum. Bite the gum a few times to release the nicotine, then park it between your cheek and gum. Repeat this every minute until the craving is gone for up to 20 to 30 minutes. The nicotine is absorbed through the skin inside your mouth. Possible side effects of the nicotine gum include mouth soreness, hiccups, and jaw pain. Nicotine gum will also stick to dentures. Carefully dispose of the used nicotine gum. Once it has been thoroughly chewed, it still has one half of the original amount of nicotine. With the lozenge, let it dissolve in your mouth slowly, moving it from side to side. Mini lozenges will dissolve in about 10 minutes, while regular lozenges will last 20 to 30 minutes. Possible side effects of nicotine lozenges include nausea, hiccups, and heartburn. Avoid drinking coffee, tea, juice, pop, or alcohol 15 minutes before or during use because these can block the effect of the gum or lozenges. Nicotine inhaler. The nicotine inhaler is another short-acting product that can be used to help with cravings. Many people like how using the inhaler feels similar to smoking a cigarette. To use the inhaler, line up the markers and pull each end in opposite directions. Insert a cartridge into the mouthpiece and twist to close securely. Take slow and shallow puffs to avoid throat burn. Don't inhale as if it were a real cigarette. The inhaler can be used for 5 to 20 minutes or until craving passes. Possible side effects of a nicotine inhaler are throat irritation, headache, and nausea. Nicotine Mouth Spray This is the newest short-acting nicotine product that helps with cravings. To use this device, push in the black button on the back until you can slide it upwards and continue sliding until the top of the dispenser pops out. Press down on the top of the device to release the spray into your mouth. It is to be sprayed directly in the mouth and not inhaled. Try not to swallow for a few seconds after you spray. If you are using the mouth spray for the first time or have not used it in a few days, spray into a tissue until a fine mist appears. Possible side effects of the nicotine mouth spray include tingling in the mouth, taste changes, and headaches. Now you know all about nicotine replacement therapy. Remember, you can start to use nicotine replacement therapy directly on your quit date. If you feel like you are not ready to quit, you can still use short-acting nicotine replacement therapy, the inhaler, gum, lozenge, or mouth spray, to help you smoke less. The less you smoke, the better. Although it is recommended that you quit smoking completely, cutting back might be a good place to start. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about how you can substitute one of these products for a cigarette. There are two prescription medications used to help people quit smoking. These medications are not for everyone. If you would like to try one, you should make an appointment with a doctor. Your doctor can decide if one of these options is safe and right for you. Let's go over these two medications together. 
Champix. Champix, also known as Bereniclin, is an oral tablet. This medication works by helping to control nicotine cravings and also makes smoking less enjoyable. It is usually started one to four weeks before your quit date, so you will be taking the medication and smoking at first. The medication is used for a total of 12 weeks and some people may need to use Vereniclin longer. If you have certain medical conditions, Vereniclin might not be appropriate for you. Talk to your doctor to find out if Vereniclin might be a good option for you. Zyban. Zyban, also known as bupropion, is an oral tablet. This medication was first used as an antidepressant and later found to help people stop smoking. Bupropion works by helping to control cravings and withdrawal symptoms. It is normally started at least a week before your quit date and used for a total of 12 weeks. Some people may need to use bupropion longer. If you have certain medical conditions, bupropion might not be appropriate for you. Please talk to your doctor, pharmacist, or nurse if you have any questions about the stop smoking medications. We have just finished reviewing the risks of smoking around the time of surgery and about the stop smoking medications available in Canada. In addition to these medications, there are other lifestyle modifications and tips you should be aware of when quitting. Here are just a few examples. Stay away from other smokers and places you associate with smoking. Get rid of all tobacco products and accessories such as matches, lighters, and ashtrays. Keep gum, hard candy, or something else to put in your mouth nearby. When a cigarette craving comes, try one of these instead. Remind family and friends that you are quitting and need their support. Make smoke-free zones, example your home, garage, and car. Review your reasons for quitting often. And lastly, don't give up, even if you temporarily start smoking again. It often takes more than one attempt before successfully quitting. Here are a couple final things to know. Smoking makes your body remove caffeine a lot faster than it does when you are not smoking. So starting on your quit day, cut back to half of your usual caffeine intake. Drinking less caffeine will help avoid symptoms like difficulty sleeping and jitteriness that can occur when you have too much caffeine in your body. You can do this by cutting back on the number or size of caffeine servings you normally drink each day. Another option is to drink decaffeinated versions instead. When quitting smoking, you may find that you are hungrier than you used to be. Make a plan to have healthy foods such as fruits and vegetables ready to eat and find some time for activities that you can enjoy by yourself or with a friend. Thank you for watching this video on the importance of quitting smoking around the time of surgery. I hope the information you have learned will make quitting easier for you. Good luck with quitting smoking and with your surgery. Remember to ask your doctor or pharmacist about any questions or concerns you may have.